a tornado warning. 10 to 20% of residences in Tornado Alley have a shelter. And as the storm grows stronger, Marla and the kids go to theirs. I got down in the cellar and I thought, this is the first time we've ever been down here as a family. But one family member is missing. Mark is outside the shelter videotaping the tornado. When that car, when that car hit the field, I shut the camera off and I was gone. I ran as fast as I could through that house. Pretty much did a heel slide down the steps, telling them it's not gonna miss us, it's gonna hit us as I'm locking that door. He slid the door shut and locked it, and it, it hit. And the cellar was shaking like this. The tornado was real loud. It sounded like a bowling ball coming. My five-year-old, he's sitting right next to me. I could tell he was screaming top of his lungs, but I couldn't hear him. I couldn't hear one thing. All you could hear is the wind in your ear. And then, just as quickly as the tornado hit the shelter, multi-vortex tornado. This it thing is gone. Is relatively slowly. The EF3 tornado stays on the ground for 41 minutes, with wind speeds near 300 miles per hour. One of the strongest storms on record. The Molinex family survives the tornado, but they aren't out of the woods yet. And then once the, it was over, my dad tried to open the door and he was telling us that he couldn't get it open. I thought he was joking. Debris from the tornado blocks the shelter door, trapping the family underground. When I pulled on that thing and it didn't move, man, a feeling went through me like you can't imagine. It didn't move a half inch, it didn't move a hair. I mean, it was like it was welded shut. Just that feeling of helplessness, you, you can't do anything about it. It was very scary for the kids, and we kept having to reassure them that it was gonna be okay. I was like, oh my gosh, we're stuck down in here. I was, I was freaking out. Luckily, Mark locates a pry bar to try and open the cellar door. I would stick that bar in and I'd get it pried open an inch or so, and then it'd slip on me. My daughter had her purse, so what I had her doing is handing me handfuls of quarters and nickels, and I was stacking them up, and every time I'd gain a half inch, I'd stack more, you know, more change under it until I could actually get the bar all the way under the door. We had it about six or eight inches open just to get air. Seeing the small opening to the outside world gives Marla an idea. We tried texting forever, and we cannot get any reception at all. So finally, she takes a phone, she texts several people, and she just throws it out the door. It was just a last minute thought. I was just hoping and praying that it did go through and that somebody got it. With their only link to the outside world gone, all the Mullinax family can do is wait. The kids, they were getting scared, wondering when we were gonna be able to get out. It was scary because we didn't know if anybody was gonna come. Mark and Marla calm the kids as best they can but their ordeal is far from over. I remember my daughter saying her ears popped again, and then mine popped, and everybody else's popped again. The sudden drop in air pressure is another twister coming straight for them. And we heard another one rumble over. You could feel the vibration. It was loud. It sounded like lions trying to claw their way into us. You can hear all the nails come out of your house at once. Coming up, one family's terror underground is nothing compared to what happened above. The Molinax family survives the El Reno tornado, only to find they can't get their shelter door open. They throw a cell phone outside in hopes that their texts for help would go through. But as they wait, 
a second tornado strikes. You can feel the ground rumble, your ears pop, but there was nothing compared to that first one. The lightning started seconds after that tornado went over. About every 10 seconds, strike and boom at the same time right on top of us, and it lasted for at least an hour. We could see the bolts hitting the ground. It was pretty scary. Lightning carries an electrical charge ranging from 100 million to 1 billion volts, enough to easily kill anyone hit. Mark's greatest fear is that a lightning bolt would strike their metal storm shelter, electrocuting him and his family. Our shelter is all steel, and our seats, they are built out of, you know, like two by fours, two by sixes, and they're covered in carpet. And I made the kids and my wife get their feet on another one and hold onto their knees and keep their backs off of that steel. That was really scary. As the Molinax family holds on and hopes for help, their prayers are answered above ground. Against the odds, a family member receives Marla's text and runs to the fire station to get help. Assistant Fire Chief Mike Carlin and his team race over to what is left of the Molinax home. What was on top of the shelter would have been the roof portion of the home, and it, it was just collapsed. We got down in uh, to where we thought the shelter was and actually uncovered a little bit of debris and, and found the door to the shelter. Just out of the blue, you know, we heard somebody hollering, and we started hollering. Finally, contact with the outside world. The firefighters bring in their equipment, and eventually, they are able to remove the debris, and Assistant Fire Chief Carlin gets the door free. He reached down and no more with a finger slid that door open. It was such a relief coming out of there, but at the same time, it was such a disaster. There was nothing left. It was very shocking. With wind speeds of 295 miles per hour, the 2.6 mile wide tornado causes nearly $40 million in damages and kills eight people. The Molinax house is destroyed, but they have survived a tornado of epic proportions. The first responders, they saved our lives that night. I just hope that people continue to stay prepared. If we're gonna live here, we've gotta be prepared for these type of events. I've never been an artist, but if I could, I would pencil out what we looked like under the cellar with the roof and then just a bunch of angels above us.